Welcome to Watch, Review, Repeat. This is the podcast where two best friends discuss the latest in film and television and then do it all over again the following week. My name is Colton Brown, and joining me is Andrew Meadows. Hello there, Andrew. Hey, man. How you doing? Pretty good. I'm sitting right next to you. (laughs) Yeah, you are. Right in the man cave. But we're not going to be alone on this episode, are we? No, sir. Henry Jamie. Welcome to the fold. Hey, guys. Well, welcome again to the fold, I guess. Welcome back to the fold. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that intro, Andrew. That was that was more difficult than it needed yeah. to be, I think. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, welcome back. Uh, so, for our listeners who have kind of been following along with our regular episodes, this is actually the first appearance that uh, Henry will be making on our show, but uh, he has uh, previously joined us on our first bonus episode that we did for our Patreon subscribers about the Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 1. And uh, what better movie to bring him back for than the latest offering from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Black Panther? Yeah, excited to talk about it. We are too. Uh, I think uh, I think it's I think we're in store for a good one. So, uh, any, anything you guys want to get in on before we get the news going for this episode? Yeah, man, I got something I need to say. Um, okay, I came across a special word um, <laughs> that really okay. really touched my soul uh, this this week. <laughs> okay. And, um, and I'd, I'd I'd like to make my um my my discoveries a regular reoccurring thing. I think it'd be a, <laughs> what I think the fuck it'd be, are you talking about? I think it'd be a really good segment we could start here, <laughs> and it could be it could be like Andrew's fun fact for the week. <laughs> it's educational. And this too. week, this week I'd like to talk about gherkins. <laughs> what the fuck are you? Uh, okay, let's let's hear him. Let's hear him. Okay, please tell us about gherkins. <laughs> So, What's your fun fact about gherkins that you'd like to share uh-huh. with us and our listeners? Because I'm not really sure where you're going with this. I'm curious. Uh, gherkins go on on burgers. <laughs> gherkins, okay. gherkins. You can fry a gherkin. You ever had fried gherkins? <laughs> uh, they're pretty good. You know about gherkins, Henry? It, it's just there's pickles, right? What's... <laughs> Again, they're pickles. <laughs> like, it's news is to it, me. Is this like some revolutionary thing I haven't heard of? <laughs> yeah. My fun fact of the week is that fucking gherkins are pickles. Okay. okay? And it blew my mind. I have no idea. So next time I go and I order something, I'm going to ask them to put extra gherkins on it. Be heavy on the gherkins. I'd like extra gherkins. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for a quarter pounder. (laughs) Hold the gherkins, please. (laughs) Have you ever actually used the word gherkins, Henry? I can't say I have. I, I think, isn't it like specific to like some geography? It must be a regional thing. That's the like, only thing that, that would fact. make sense. Like it's oh, okay. Do you have pickle? Do you, do is you pickle more? an American word? Um, it's it's an American and Canadian word, and elsewhere around the globe. Oh, it's like a British thing, right? They're called yes. They're called gherkins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's British, but, Australia, just about. I mean, a lot of other English speaking places call them gherkins. Yeah, because so. that that one building in London that's like shaped like a pickle is called. The it's gherkin. called the gherkin. Yeah. <laughs> that. That's makes so awesome. a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> <sighs> so, uh, Andrew's fun fact of the week this week is gherkin means pickle. So, there you go. Run with that. Well, I think we have a new recurring segment, everyone. <laughs> I, I don't see how we'll be able to top that one, but I leave it in Andrew's very capable hands to, to do exactly that uh, when we return for our next episode. Uh, now, let's uh, let's get into this episode uh, after, after hearing that fun fact. Uh, <laughs> pretty light news uh we're gonna start with uh, a bit of a follow-up to what andrew and i talked about last week kung fury getting a feature film adaptation we know that uh, michael fassbender has joined the cast as a lead now we know that arnold schwarzenegger will be also joining the cast playing the president of the united states oh <laughs> nice <Man>. uh, <laughs> I like where this is heading. I mean, yeah, it's it's shaping up pretty good so far. That's a that's a pretty good cast. Plus Hasselhoff, I think we mentioned last week is coming back as well. So you've right. got you've got Fassbender, Hasselhoff, and now Schwarzenegger. Ah, uh, it seems like a pretty good start to me. Absolutely, it's a lot of testosterone on screen. <laughs> a lot of testosterone. It's, uh, yes. I mean, I, I guess technically they 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 tried kind of doing the Expendables. That was kind of the 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 most testosterone allowed on screen at one that's given true. time, right? Yes. That was pretty ridiculous. It didn't, didn't, didn't work out too well, I guess, but uh, we're looking forward to this one, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it out for sure. I know another one we're looking forward to, Incredibles 2, Ooh. which we speculated that we would be getting a trailer uh, on our last episode, and uh, sure enough, we are uh, 
100% correct in our predictions. We did, in fact, get a new trailer that debuted with the Olympic Games uh, happening in uh, Pyeongchang. What did you think about this, Henry? Uh, I, I mostly liked it. Like it's, It was very short. I know they had like a little teaser before where it didn't really show anything. I think the first one was showed the logo. Yeah, yeah. There, were, there wasn't a whole lot to it as far yeah. as movie footage and such. Yeah. So I guess this is the first time we got some actual footage. And it's, it's interesting where they're taking the plot where Mr. Incredibles kind of being a stay-at-home dad. Yeah, kind while, of taking uh, a back seat to... Uh, yeah, Elastigirls. Elastigirl, one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it should be interesting. It, it, it's Pixar, so I, you know, I give them all my money. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's a pretty, pretty smart idea. They, 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 with, the, with the exception of, I would probably say, the Cars franchise, they, they usually do not lead us astray. Uh, they certainly haven't recently. So, uh, Andrew, what would you think? Oh, I like The Incredibles a whole lot. Yeah. I think it's fun. Yeah. So. I, I think what's exciting for me is I haven't watched Incredibles in a while. It's one of the... I don't own it, actually. So what? I, I know. I well, know. I mean, I don't own it, but <laughs> you should sure as hell own it. <laughs> uh, no, it's it's something... I think, I think I'll think i definitely pick it up, and uh, I, I would, I, I'm would. i excited to kind of revisit it prior to this coming out. So I, I think I've said it before on this podcast, so I apologize for repeating myself, but it's what the Fantastic Four movie should be exactly and 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 what they failed miserably in doing so for 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 far too long uh so at least we have this and hopefully the second one kind of lives up to that reputation that the first one has has brought um so that comes out in july of this year oh i'm sorry june 15th that comes out in june 15th of this year so a few months away it's gonna be good it's gonna be good Uh, TV news. Like you said, that's really it for film. Uh, True Detective Season 3, we know it's happening. Uh, most of the cast has been uh, kind of filled in, but uh, I think we've got our last, well, maybe not our last, but certainly our most recent announcement of a series regular, and that's going to be Ray Fisher, uh, who uh, had, a, had a star turn as Cyborg in Justice League most <laughs> recently. That's cool. That's a joke. Everyone laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone point and laugh at Justice League. Ha ha ha, shitty movie. Nah, he's fine. Um, I, I'm sure he's better than that movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I think probably anyone in that movie is probably better than than what was actually yeah, yeah, indicated yeah. on screen. Uh, so it's hard to hard to point a finger at anyone in there. So no, it seems like a good get. Uh, I I I know we've talked about True Detective a few times. Um, actually, Henry, I don't know. If, I don't think we've talked True Detective with you. Did you watch uh, either season of True Detective? Yeah, I watched season one, and then before I watched season two, I heard you two talk about your terrible experience. So I was like, I'm just going to avoid that altogether. Pass. So we successfully dissuaded you. Well, let's just say we, we saved you a lot of, uh, I mean, I don't know that it'd be heartbreak because your expectations were probably in the toilet by that yeah. point, but <laughs> it's we saved you time and, 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 you know. Yeah, I can only imagine going from something as good as season one to what you describe as some of the worst oh it's a television wreck it's awful yeah it's 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 rough it is very rough uh yeah but uh, i'm i'm cautiously optimistic about season three shall we say it it could it could very well turn out to be a huge piece of shit i think that uh, nick pizza man is still on board and kind of writing some of it but hopefully he has had some other influences in the writing room to maybe <laughs> you know temper down the, the bullshit i think i th- you know my, my my working theory at this point is that Kerry fukunaga is why season one worked as well as it did is because i think he had quite a quite a bit of influence over all of it not right. just in terms of directing but i think overall creatively so we'll see if that actually ends up being true uh, i don't i mean i feel like i shouldn't expect anything out of it but i it's hard you know it, it, i want it i want it to be good i yeah, want it you to want be you're good. chasing that first one so uh we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens with it uh last bit of tv news um jeffrey tambor uh he's he's kind of been the, the lead on uh, transparent for amazon studios for i think four seasons now uh he has uh he's been fired from Transparent uh in the wake of some harassment claims that were kind of levied against him uh I think over the past few months. Uh you know, he has released a statement saying that, you know, he's he's disappointed in how they handled he's called the accusations false and all that, but uh you know, I think they did an investigation uh internally at Amazon and clearly they found enough to say, Hey, let's you know, just nip it in the bud here and call it a day with in I don't. I mean, it's crazy. It's the same thing with House of Cards. Where to me, I guess I haven't watched Transparent, admittedly, and in the same way that I haven't watched House of Cards past season one. But it seems like taking away such a major part of the cast is 
pretty massive shakeup. And I have to wonder how something like this, you know, whether it's transparent or whether it's house of cards or anything that's kind of dealing with this, like how, how they kind of operate from that point. And I think it's the right move. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying that it's not the right move, but it, and it, you know, it's tough. I mean, certainly something like house cards, it seems like the easiest way to just be like, well, how do you, how do you do it without Frank Underwood? Well, I'm, I'm sure there's ways to do it. Obviously they're trying to figure that out now, but it's, it's tough in the sense that, You've got a lot of people that are reliant upon shows like this for for their careers and stuff like that, and to kind of just torpedo that immediately because you have one shit bag that's that's bringing it down for all of them, kind of unfair. Um, so you know you get you get rid of the problem and hopefully you can kind of work your way out of that and, and fix the problem from that point on. But uh, certainly certainly pretty big news here. Uh, so like I said, I don't think any of us have watched Transparent. Is that accurate? Yeah, I have not seen it. I watched season one, which I didn't oh, you enjoy. Did? Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, then maybe you can kind of enlighten us. I mean, uh, Tambor is, is he the main character or is yeah, he just yeah. one of the main characters? Yeah, he is the transparent. In right, the, right. Okay. That. Yeah, that was my understanding. So that, that that's kind of what I'm wondering. I mean, I don't know if they've drifted away from that, you know, past season one potentially, but it just seems like, well, that's, that's, uh, how do you, how do you, how do you work your way out of that? Yeah. I don't know where the plot is now. Um, what do they have? Three seasons? Is this season four or? I, I think four seasons have aired, and I think that that he's not coming back for a fifth season. I think is, okay. is kind of what I'm reading here. Yeah, I, I would hope they continue the show, even though I haven't been watching it. It's something I would like to go back to, and for all the other cast members, you know, seems really shitty for their career on the show to end because of someone else's. Exactly. Actions yeah, that, on that's, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like yeah, said, there's so many parties involved that just because. You know, someone that is as seemingly integral as your show as they can be, it, just because you're getting rid of them doesn't, you know, it's, it's not fair to kind of punish everyone else yeah. for the transgressions of, of one person. So, it's I don't a hard know. thing, though. But, you yeah. know, it's a hard thing to carry. Yeah, like I said, it's just, it is one of those things where, well, how do you, how do you move forward from that point? And, you know, it's, I, I, you just got to, you got to, you got to deal with it as, you, as much, you know, as well as you can. Yeah, this could be an interesting opportunity for Amazon Studios. To if they were to continue this, to cast an actual transgender actress in place, like right. I think, if, I think if we're gonna yeah. if you're gonna replace someone, like you're not gonna get someone that looks exactly the same or that kind of thing, and everyone's probably gonna be aware that Jeffrey Tambor was fired for a specific reason. So I don't know. I think if you could replace him and just get someone yeah. more fitting for the role. That's true. I mean, my assumption is that they would just write the character out and then just, yeah. you know, frame it around someone else. You know, whether, what, yeah, again, if it is an actual trans actor or actress, then, then certainly they, they would kind of handle it that way. But I don't know. It, it, perhaps I'm speaking out of turn given that I have mm, only passing right. familiarity with the show. Um, but it's, it's certainly certainly a big piece of news is to, to kind of lose your lead actor like, like they did here. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the I think that's it for the news. I think I think we're ready to talk some Black Panther, aren't we? Black Panther, man. I'm um, I'm ready. I listen to this. I listen to this soundtrack nonstop. It's like the only music I've listened to for like two weeks. I've been pumped up about some Black Panther ever since the uh, ever since you see him in uh, in uh, what Civil War? Yeah, yeah, Captain America: Civil War. Yeah, man. You know, and he's so agile and just—he's just a complete badass, man. I've been pumped up about some Black Panther, um, and then and then you know the. Anyways, you probably should start with the sh- introduce <laughs> introduce the topic, man. He's, he's ready away. to go, guys. Yeah. He's ready to go. Um, no, I I mean, well, well, we'll we'll talk a little box office in in a minute, but this this thing's been setting the world on fire. I mean, this is kind of next level of. He's 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 a list now. Let's put it that oh, way. Oh yeah. Um, so so the Black Panther film, uh, first Black Panther film we've we've gotten uh, based on the Marvel comic book character. Uh, this is directed by Ryan Coogler, uh, who previously did Fruitvale Station and Creed. Um, special shout out to Creed for like the nineteenth time on this podcast. What a fucking excellent film! I know Henry, you watched it recently, so yeah. you can probably vouch for that claim. Hit uh, you right in the feels, oh, it's, man. It's, it's, it's too good. It's incredible. Uh, it, every time I see it, I just want to go out and box and <laughs> like f- run down. And and living in Philly now, it's just I'm yeah, like I just yeah, want to get out there, like run up the steps, and like I don't know. It's, it's it, the movie's great. It's fucking good. I mean, and it's a perfect audition for for Ryan Coogler to to be able to show off his chops. 
uh, you know, he was obviously he's ready for the big time. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that much more as we go on. Uh, the, the movie was written by Ryan Coogler and uh, Joe Robert Cole. Uh, and this this movie has an absolutely ridiculous cast. And, and Marvel has really been crushing it lately in terms of cast. I mean, certainly something like the Avengers is cheating in the sense that you've got, you know, the the lead characters from a million different movies coming together. But to be able to assemble the cast that, you know, this had that really a lot of their recent releases have had. I mean, Doctor Strange comes to mind too. But I mean, this fucking cast is just absolutely stacked from top to bottom. Chadwick Boseman, Michael B. Jordan, Lupita Nyong'o, Denai Gurira, Martin Freeman, Daniel Kaluuya, Letitia Wright, Winston Duke, Sterling K. Brown, Angela Bissett, Forrest Whitaker, and Andy Serkis. Woo! All right, I had, boom, I had to speed boom, it. Boom, I had to speed boom, it up boom. there because I wanted to mention every single person here, and, and part of that is because they're all very talented in their own right, and then also part of that is fucking hell. Everyone is just fantastic here. Um, someone mentioned this takes place after Captain America: Civil War. Uh, it's it's you know. Civil War is a, is a good introduction to the character, but this movie definitely, I, I would argue, stands alone as as being a very good introduction to the character while also kind of serving as a, an effective follow-up to what we saw of the character in Civil War. Um, and if you've made it this long to the episode and you don't know what Black Panther is about, then, then this is for you. Uh, general, general plot synopsis of it. T'Challa, uh, Prince T'Challa, after the death of his father, who is the king of Wakanda, uh, returns home to his isolated, uh, technologically advanced African nation to succeed to the throne and take his rightful place as king. Um, so I want to get into box office a little bit before we kind of dive headfirst into the movie, if that's cool with everyone. Yeah, I heard someone at the at the store today be like, what's up with this Black Panther movie? Like, I, have, I don't really know anything about it. And I was like, what like i like i, I, I like blew head. my mind i was like <laughs> this is everywhere like it was literally all over walmart like there's just like posters and like stickers and everything and like there's a trailer on like every single thing and like that's all anyone's talking about like how do you not know about this movie that's probably uh, the only person on earth but he might be on. one person yeah 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 um no I, I mean this thing has just been absolutely unstoppable as far as the box office is concerned uh, I, I, so pure numbers, uh, I'm not going to get too bogged down in pure numbers here, but three day weekend, uh, $195.3 million is what deadline is projecting for it. It's a little bit above what Disney has it projected right now. And, and to be fair, we're recording uh Sunday night, so we don't have any actuals in just yet. So it's possible that it goes slightly down. It goes slightly up from there. If I had to make a, a, a you know, a bold guess, I would say that it's probably going to go slightly up from there, but just based on what I've seen, based on the metrics that it's performed so far, I, I, I think that this, this thing is going to go in any direction. It's going to be up, but uh, I mean, $195 million for a three day weekend. And it's looking at $225.7 million for the four day weekend Ooh. because we're, we're looking at a holiday weekend. And you got president's oh, day yeah. on Monday. So, it's got that benefit where you know your usual Sunday night drops aren't really going to happen because folks don't have work or school in the morning. Well, Andrew does, I guess. They, yeah. they don't celebrate national holidays there, apparently. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, 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 I got to go in tomorrow morning too. No, I guess they don't do it there either. Yeah, people, people still getting sick. I, yeah. I just happen to be off tomorrow, so it works out for me. Um, I mean, so just to put that in perspective, that's easily the highest opening weekend gross in February history for, for the box office, uh, far surpassing the previous record uh, that, that Deadpool held, which had $152.1 million over the four-day weekend. So 225 versus 152, and that's, that, that's beyond shattering the records. Uh, it's, and in addition to that is the fifth highest uh, three-day weekend gross ever, Oh my goodness! Uh, which puts it good for the second highest in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe, which to this Jeez. point is eighteen movies, uh, and it's it's just behind the first Avengers movie, uh, which which I think was about two hundred and six, two hundred seven million dollars. I don't have the exact Lord figure have in mercy. front of me, but what a solo film. But yeah, yeah uh, it's, in terms of solo films, it is well certainly as a, as a first in a franchise, it's well above anything else that that's come before it. But uh, even compared to Captain America: Civil War, compared to Iron Man three, which were the you know the kind of the couple of the highest grossing solo quote unquote solo films that, that that the Marvel Cinematic Universe has offered to to this point, I mean it's it's outgrossing those by probably close to twenty to twenty five million, depending on which one you're looking at. It's crazy, and like I said, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see, see this thing go up even more. I don't know if it'll quite crack two hundred million dollars for the three day weekend. 
Uh, at this point, I'd say it's probably unlikely. We would probably know if it was going to do that, but still, the fact that it's, I mean, this is a movie that probably a couple months ago was tracking for sub $100 million. Uh, and, and, uh, was it really? Well, for opening weekend. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was looking at like a 95, which is in line with kind of what, you know, say Doctor Strange did and stuff like that. Certainly kind of closer to what we'd seen before. And this thing has just captured, um, you know, that, that cultural zeitgeist in a way that Marvel movies really haven't done uh, for quite some time. And it's not surprising. It, you know, it, it really isn't surprising. There's certainly a lot that's really kind of uh, led to that, I, I, w- I would say, and uh, we'll certainly touch on that as well. But, uh, I mean, fucking hell. Uh, a, well-deserved, but B, just just from an outsider's standpoint, holy shit, like, uh, Marvel just keeps winning. <laughs> and so, uh, by extension, where the fuck is my paycheck? That's it. I mean, I understand that I haven't gone on the record as saying that this is amazing, but... Uh, we talk about Disney all the time, do uh, we? I mean... I mean we're the reason we they, 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 to needed, they needed to get it, you know, give us a cut of that because they're making bank on this shit. And, uh, you know, we, we, we want our slice. All right. That's you know, it. otherwise we're going to, we're going to turn against it. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> um, no, uh, it, it, in last fun comparison, last fun comparison. And it's a lifetime domestic run. I believe justice league made around $225 million. I think, so. I think that's what you said. Yeah. The other night, I don't have the exact figure in front wow. of me, but, uh, it's looking like that, uh, over 70 days. Over yeah, over that seventy entire days, domestic run, it's uh, it's making about as much as this movie will have made in four days, <laughs> if not, and that might be less. Uh, you know, if things turn out, it might be slightly more, it might be slightly less. But the fact that it's even even slightly close, I mean, think about it. You've got a movie with fucking Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, The Flash, c- Cyborg, I guess. Uh, you know, regardless, just the just the Trinity there, like that that should be an easy set the world on fire kind of movie. And, uh, you know, I, I I realize we're kicking a dead dog here, but holy shit, did WB just absolutely just screw the pooch with what they did with that that cinematic universe. Like, it, it it's to me, it's a testament to what Marvel's done, and, and it's also just really a testament to the, the strength of this movie in general. So on that note, let me let me turn the mic over to, to either one of you guys. Let's just kind of open this up as a general discussion of kind of what you guys thought of Black Panther. Take it away, Henry. Take it away. Yeah, so I watched it on Friday night, only because I couldn't watch it Thursday night for the premiere in IMAX. And then following the movie, I sent my sister this text. I said, Black Panther is one of the most important movies ever. She's like, sounds intense. And then my next follow-up was, <laughs> it will end I- racism. <laughs> so that, well, that was my initial <laughs> initial impression. <laughs> Of the movie, you want to come to you want to come to Zephyr Hills in Dade City and share those thoughts, my uh, friend. As long as everybody <laughs> as much sees as Black I'd like Panther, that to be true. it will it will cure everything. I'll tell you what, though, It'll I cure left. everything for for a two two hour and fifteen minute runtime. I hope, but I I left I left feeling pretty fucking good too, man. I it was just oh. I think it just hits like so many of the right spots. So it's overall fun movie. It has the cool Marvel factor of like this hero with. Cool abilities, cool gadgets. Uh, it's a brand new nation. It is very accurate to the comics. So, like I know sometimes people get upset. They're like, "Oh, like they changed this and that." And like you know, sometimes that makes me upset if it's like a big deal. But I think this one was very, very faithful to the source material, and it was it had a very powerful message, and it was a it was a cultural phenomenon. So it's it's not surprising that it's doing the numbers it's doing. Yeah, man. It blew me away. Like, so often, you know, you get hyped up about something, um, and and you go and see it, and you just kind of, because you've hyped, you've overhyped yourself. Yeah. You leave kind of slightly disappointed, even though it might be okay. You know, it's just not what you, just not what you thought or whatever, right? When I, when I w- walked out of the theater, I just, uh, it got me to, it got me to tear up at a couple different spots, and, and I don't even think that it was, I don't necessarily think that, that was the intention. It's just all oh, the characters are so well fleshed out and they're all very well realized. And it's a superhero movie, so it kind of sounds weird for me to say it, but everything feels so grounded. And um, just, a, just the way you can relate to so many of the different characters. Oh, the way you can, I don't know, just the way that all the characters are very relatable. You know, yeah, they, I mean, they feel believable people. They feel very real. They feel right. like real people that you could see existing in this universe. 
Right. Um, so just, it's just a, such a, the, the, the score, the soundtrack, the, the action, yeah. the, just the characterization. I mean, all of it's just so well done. And, um, yeah, if you ha- it, well, I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but I was going to say, if you haven't seen it, you need to go see this shit, because it's fucking good. Wow, spoiling his recommendation already. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, man. Yeah, I left the theater completely. I, I, I want to go see it again in theaters. It just it, it rocked my socks, man. Some good shit. I agree with everything that has been said before this. Um, I have seen it twice uh, prior to recording this. I saw it opening night, Thursday night in IMAX, and then I saw it again with Andrew... Uh, Saturday night in IMAX of opening weekend. Uh, both both show times were packed and uh, fun audiences. I actually thought that uh, our Saturday audience was a little bit more fun. A lot of a lot of a lot of uh, Americans clapping throughout it. That's that's an American movie theater thing. Um, <laughs> but I, I kind of enjoyed. It. I mean, the audience was fucking engaged the whole way through. And um, you know, it, the first time I saw it, I, I really really enjoyed it. But I don't think it quite hit me the way that it did until I saw it the second time through. And the second time through, I was immediately a little bit more well-rested and kind of more into it. But man, it just fucking absolutely walloped me in the feels the second time I saw it. You know, I, it's such a, such a powerful, impactful movie across the board. And, and for a lot of different reasons. And, you know, I say that, you know, I always preface most of our statements about kind of things of this nature. Well, Andrew and I, we're, we're two white dudes, you know. some, some <laughs> Something like this maybe doesn't necessarily capture... Uh, what it does for 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 a lot of audiences that are going to see this movie, uh, you know, it's a probably ninety percent black cast. It's written by two two black men, directed by a, a, you know a, a black man. It's 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 an important movie uh, for for Just really those reasons alone, right. in terms of representation, in terms of really kind of getting a message out there that doesn't really get put out there. I think uh, it's certainly not in anything of this size and anything of this magnitude. And it's pretty crazy that, you know, Marvel is the one to kind of be able to break through that kind of barrier and, and, and to tell a story. And, and I, think what's, I think what makes it work um, in, in ways that maybe other types of representation don't seem to break through for whatever reason, you know, even if they should, is the fact that it is just a well-rounded package overall in the sense that it's a satisfying superhero film for 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 anyone, but also it, it contains these very authentic, these very real themes and uh, messages that it contains that, that kind of, it kind of elevates it above that, that usual standard. You know, we, we expect quality with Marvel at this point. We don't really expect this level of quality though. And uh, I mean, they, it's it very well be the new gold standard for yeah, not for only Marvel. just Marvel films, yeah. superhero films, but I mean, just any, any sort of films just kind of on this level they don't they don't come around that often let's just put it that way yeah i mean just i don't know it's such a well-made movie well crafted a lot of love a lot of love went into yeah, it and and i think that you can absolutely feel the love that went into it i mean ryan coogler was obviously the perfect man for the job i think that's that's fair to say you know it it, it just comes from such a real headspace and you can feel you can feel the craft you can feel you know, like you said, the love that that he put into it, and and the authenticity uh, behind every bit of dialogue, behind really just every every setting. You know, just the way that it starts, and you know the way that that kind of story progresses throughout the movie. You know, without not getting too specific with it just yet. I mean, it's powerful shit, man. It's, it's moving. It is fucking moving shit. Um, I, you know, from a technical standpoint, I mean. I know that uh, you know superhero films aren't exactly popular choices for for Academy Awards and such, but I granted, granted, we are in month two of 2018 at this point. But if this thing isn't at least nominated for some sort of technical awards, whether it's production design, whether it's costume design, anything along those lines, like at a bare minimum, it needs recognition from that standpoint. Yeah, now, I think it. I think it definitely, definitely goes above that for me. And I think probably for all of us here recording this now, but holy shit, this is just an absolutely gorgeous film. Um, cinematography is just spectacular. Mm-hmm. Um, and just the way that it depicts really everything. I mean, specifically Wakanda, of course, is kind of, you know, it's it's, it's honestly magical. Just, you know, what it, the scale that it conveys and really the culture that it depicts is mm-hmm. just so well realized and it's just very lush designs throughout and it's Wakanda and its people. Yes, absolutely. Everything, everything's yeah. very, all, all, all aspects of it just feel 
they don't feel half-assed at all. Like they just, they feel like there was just a ton of thought put into it. A ton of just, I mean, we said it already, but it's just a ton of love put into every aspect of this film, top to bottom. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, it, that, it absolutely blew me away from that, from, from that perspective. Uh, and I, I really like the score too. And I oh, think yeah. you yeah. Kind of mentioned that, um, you know, they kind of incorporated a lot of, uh, I guess probably traditional African drums and, you know, tribal beats and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, it very, it lends at this very unique kind of sound that you don't really often experience, I guess. No. But I mean, I guess that's just the whole film in general. Yeah, right. It's, exactly. it's just, it's just it's a setting that you don't really see a whole lot. And uh, so obviously that, that just kind of makes sense for the for, for for what they tried to convey. And it's it's it was refreshing. I I will say to to kind of really just kind of sit down and watch this movie. It's I I mean I I want to see it again. <laughs> kind of right now talking yeah. about it. I kind of want to just like peace out, motherfuckers. We're going to the theater. Well, it's, probably, it's probably sold out. If we're trying to catch anything tonight. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. We didn't we yeah. didn't plan ahead, so we not we wouldn't even be able to do it if we wanted to. Right. Yeah. No, Ryan Coogler is such a goddamn professional. Like, I've been reading interviews and, like, watching interviews with this guy, and he just poured, like, so much of his, like, heart into this film. He spent three weeks in Africa, like, going to different places, learning about the culture there, and, you know, he got very specific people for each job. Like, he was the one that got Kendrick for the soundtrack. He... Mm -hmm. He got the composer um, Ludwig, uh, forget his last name. Yeah, Goronson. Yeah, which I, they worked on Creed together, right? Yeah, I think I think they did both Creed and Fruitvale Station, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so like this is very much like his film, and I know he picked pretty much the entire cast, aside from who was already selected previously, like Chadwick and uh, Martin Freeman. But, right, right. So I give him so much credit for this film for just paying so much attention to detail with from the costumes to the music to the to the script to just everything. Had a specific vision yeah right like geez see and that's i mean i know it's just going to sound like we're blowing marvel again for the for the upteenth <laughs> time but you know basically for for i guess probably really phase three it seems like for for marvel they've absolutely just kind of handed the keys to the kingdom to to some filmmakers and said hey You've got ideas for this. Do your thing. We will support you every step along the way, and and that's how you get films like Black Panther. You know, I, I think they've I think they've rattled off a really impressive streak overall, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll get into that in uh, in our bonus episodes. A uh, little plug for you guys uh, for a future <laughs> yeah. bonus episode about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, but no, I know. I mean, more immediately, you know, talking about Black Panther. It, it it just feels like a Ryan Coogler film, you know. If you watch Creed mm -hmm. and then you watch this movie, you can absolutely feel the connection. You know, it doesn't. Some, you know, people like to throw the made by committee shit at Marvel, and I don't think that fucking applies to to this movie at all. No, it, 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 no, it doesn't feel that way. It feels it feels like it feels like a work of love, and you can the the his, I just in the cinematography alone. You know what I mean, and a lot of the action sequences and the the the, the one shots panning around in circles yeah. and stuff, like mm -hmm. even yeah. up front when the kids are playing basketball, which right, right. Uh, you can it feels like his movie. You know what I mean? It's just like a signature thing. Yeah. Um, and then I mean, don't get me wrong, down to the content too. I mean, the content is 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 very much. You can tell that it it tells it. I don't know, just the way he he's a very good storyteller, and um, I I don't it it doesn't feel like uh it doesn't feel like it's made with 40 different people sitting around a boardroom table. No, I think a lot of times you can tell when that is the case. Right, because things conflict. Because it feels that way. Right. Um, but this is one unified vision, and it, and, it, and, and, and you can tell that the people that, that worked on the film shared that vision. You know what I mean? Everything was just very much, it was very um, one powerful note. You know what I mean? And it, it resonates. It's, it's a super powerful movie. Um, I don't know, man. I haven't seen a movie like <laughs> I haven't seen a superhero movie that hit that I don't know just kind of hit me the way that this one hit me. It, hit, it no, doesn't I, feel I like agree. a superhero I, I, movie. You know, I, I've I've enjoyed pretty much everything that Marvel's put out. You know, to to, to varying degrees, certainly. Sure. But very few of them have been impactful in the way that this one is. I think because it does draw on certain things that uh, perhaps other movies are, are more keen to kind of just gloss over. We, t I, we talked about this briefly, I guess, last night after we saw the movie. You know, Ultra Carbon is something we watched recently that hits on 
certain themes of, you know, there's a lot of real life parallels that it tries to, to go for, but it just does very surface level, right. uh, you know, allusions to them. And then it kind of just moves on and say, yeah, we're not really concerned with that. Black Panther is absolutely concerned with, with these, these sorts of things. And it's know. a very, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't, it, it knows what it's trying to do up front. It doesn't try to do too much. You know what I mean? It, it, it tells, it tells I don't know. It's it's very uh, deliberate, you know, and what it's trying to what it's trying to do and how it does it, you know. And, and it's, say, you know, it's and it's wrapped up in this overall package that is, you know, it's a tightly told story about, you know, who, you know, when we when we come down to it is a superhero. Yeah. But it does it by, you know, attaching it to very relevant modern day, well, not and really not even just modern day, really just at, all the time, you know, historical themes and and echoes throughout history that it just fucking draws upon and uh does in a masterful way um so can we talk about the cast for a minute and how good they are where, where do you even start i don't I, that's the problem there's too many <laughs> just, we'll be, we're gonna be here all night talking about yeah. the cast uh well from the top chadwick boseman okay. of course uh stroke of genius certainly casting him uh you know back back i guess probably by the russos for uh captain america civil war uh so it's continued excellence i guess here uh, you know, he's he's a very charismatic lead, great, great character. Um, but I think that, uh, and I'll go on the record here, I think I've probably told both of you guys this separately off the air, I think that this is the best supporting cast we've gotten in any Marvel movie. And in recent memory, it's one of the best supporting casts I, I can just think of in general. Yeah, no, it's strong. I, yeah, I agree. In terms of acting, obviously, and I, I don't, that's never really been Marvel's weakness is acting. I think they've always been well acted across the board. It's really just sometimes characterization where... Certain characters just get more, certain characters just get less. It just kind of is based on the flow in the field of the movie, whereas this one just feels like everyone is is granted uh, an inequal amount of importance. You know, it doesn't feel like, uh, here, you know, it, this is just a superficial character that's there just to, you know, be there for really, the sake of being there. Like, everyone has a fucking purpose in this movie. I think the character posters are telling of that, too. That, yeah, that's absolutely fair. You know yeah, what I, mean? I like they, those. They, uh, the, the char- like, I thought the character posters were powerful when they put them out, but then now that you can... Now that you've seen the movie and you read the little taglines for each character, it's, it's, it's wow. You know what I mean? It's, uh, they, the supporting cast was absolutely unbelievable. And the way they all mesh so well, too. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It felt, it's, yeah. it, 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 and it feels like the whole movie is very organic, but I mean, just the, the characterization and how, how everybody deals with each other feels incredibly organic as well. It's so good. So good. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. He's not wrong. My feet are falling asleep. Um, uh, Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> Michael uh, B. You know, uh, we, we could probably talk a little bit more about Killmonger specifically. In the spoilers uh, and, and, You know, in spoilers, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, from an acting standpoint, A, Killmonger is just a fucking fantastic villain. Certainly, certainly, I'd say one of the best villains we've seen in the Marvel Universe. And also, again, just generally speaking, I think he's one of the best villains we've seen in recent memory. Uh He's just incredibly well realized by Michael B. Jordan, who, uh, you know, you know, obviously he was the lead in Creed, so there was obviously an established connection there between him and Ryan Coogler, and uh, we are thankful for that. Let's put it that way. And fr- and Fruitvale, Fruitvale Station. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Uh, well, um, yeah, I, 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 I'm very thankful that uh, they, they, he brought him in for this, and uh, it, it's it's a it's a wonderful role. As I mentioned, we'll we'll get into that a bit more, but. Uh, I mean the the, the Dora Milaje, uh, Okoye, Denai Guerrero, oh, man. absolutely crushing it here. I know, I know. Obviously, people are fans of her from The Walking Dead, but uh, that's man. a show that I haven't watched past the first season. So this, I, I, I you know, I'm, I'm generally aware of of, of the Michonne character, but uh, so th- this is kind of my biggest introduction, I would say, to her specifically, uh, as more of a more beyond the surface level, and uh, phew, man. She's good. Man, she's yeah. good. Uh, Lupita Nyong'o's Nakia. Great, great character in her own right. Um, Daniel Kaluuya's Wakabi. Fuck, I, I'm, I'm going to go down the list if you guys yeah. don't add anything great. more to this. I mean, uh, I Martin mean, everyone, Freeman. Martin Freeman. <laughs> Martin motherfucking Freeman is great. Got a token <laughs> white guy awesome. in there. <laughs> I, I love this, his role in this. Like, just, yeah, yeah, I did yeah. too. He got uh, he got a surprisingly large role in this and yeah. in one, one that didn't... You know, because because that's that's kind of where you you, know, you you might run into trouble is like, oh, okay, you got a you know you got a principally all black cast, and then you've got your white guy. Could you could you fall into the white savior trope? I mean, you could have, and I think that they didn't. I mean, 
No, it, it was it was pretty successfully lampshaded yeah. here, uh, and, and and in a way that uh, you know his character felt natural. It felt organic to the story. It didn't feel like he was a forced presence. Like oh, you know, white audiences need to have their white representative for the movie. Like it didn't feel like that at all. I mean. He was fucking good. He was a good character here. Yeah, you know, he played that awkward guy, you know? <laughs> he was very much awkward throughout the whole movie, and I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. No, he was fun. He was fun. Uh, Letitia Wright, Shuri. Oh, MVP. Great. Maybe. Great. Oh, maybe, uh, maybe. It's tough. It's tough, maybe. isn't it? Because, <laughs> I mean, it, it, uh, she, she's a scene stealer. But then, you know, you've got Winston Dukes and Baku, also a scene stealer. Oh. Uh, so, uh, Andy Circus, man. Andy Serkis lending probably one of the most over the top oh, performances of entire it. life. That guy oh, was okay. having a blast, not being stuck in a mocap suit, relishing the opportunity to to show off his beautiful face and fucked up teeth. He was he was a, he, he was he was a I mean that dude's charismatic as shit, dude. He's he, a he great claw. In, yeah, he great oh, claw. Oh my goodness. Yeah, uh, I mean, even, say even even the bit players, Sterling K. Brown, uh, uh, Uncle or, uh, loved him. Njobu, uh, Angela Bassett, Ramonda. Forrest Whitaker, Zuri. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a stacked cast. It absolutely is a stacked cast. And boy, was everyone game for this. And I, I, I love that. It's just the whole thing is just a labor of love. And I, I, I 100% believe that, that everyone involved just kind of very much relished their opportunity to be involved with a production like this to, to kind of be able to portray a lot of these characters. I mean, it's fucking good. It's fucking good, all right? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... Any any non spoiler type things you guys want to hit off hit on? I mean that's kind of really all that I had uh, kind of put together for my notes as far as non spoilers. Uh, uh, there's certainly plenty to talk about, but uh, I mean before we get into recommendation and then spoilers, anything you guys want to touch on? Um. Oh, fun fact. Deny. Gar- oh, we got another fun fact. <laughs> yeah. This He's is hijacking the this, segment. This is not a word. It's this, this is actual fact. <laughs> okay. Uh, Gherkins. I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean that. That's true. <laughs> that shit's gonna <laughs> pop up on Jeopardy. Now you're gonna have the fucking answer, okay? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Please continue. <laughs> uh, did y'all know Denai Guerrero again, who plays Okoye and Michonne? She writes plays. Did you know this? I did not know that. She, she. I, I think she. I think she was nominated. I don't know if she's won uh, Tony yet, but her play, at least one of them, has been nominated for wow. Tony. I, I was listening to a podcast with her. I think she was on the um, formerly called uh, Nerdist, now now called oh, yeah. ID10T. I, ID10T. Yeah, she yeah. was on there, and yeah, she's like a big deal in the like playwright world. And oh I was shit! Like, wow. Okay. Like, yeah. Well, she plays a badass. She does a good job of playing a badass. Oh yeah, that too. She knows how to use a spear. That, that man, she's a cool chick. That is a interesting fun fact, and. Uh, Probably a little bit more interesting than Andrews, for being honest entirely. Uh, or at least more relevant. Ger- I'm Ger- sorry. Gherkins are fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, man. Um, okay. Yeah, no, that, uh, that, is, no, that, that, that is legitimately interesting. Uh, I mean, not, not, I, I'm, not, I'm not putting Gherkins down, all right? I'm just saying that in terms of being relevant to the podcast and, and, and certainly, uh, you know, it's, it's a fucking cool fact. It's a cool fact to know. Uh so, yeah, Andrew, anything else you kind of want to add? No, I got nothing else, you sons of bitches. All right, well, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll start with you here as far as the recommendation. I mean, I think I think we all are pretty much in agreement here, but uh, I'll, I'll let you kick this off, Andrew, and then I'll, I'll tack on my thoughts if I have any. And Henry, I would do as well. highly, highly, highly recommend you go see this in theaters. I recommend you go see it quickly and maybe multiple times. It's really good. I think you'll enjoy it. I think there's something there for everybody. There's something there for the children's. There's something there for the adults. There's something there for white people. There's something there specifically for black people. It's a really good fucking movie. Go see it. Henry? Yeah, no, completely agree. And, you know, I've gone with some friends who don't follow the Marvel Cinematic Universe, aren't that big into superhero movies, and they loved it. So I think if you're not a big moviegoer person, if you're not that big in the superhero movies, just go see it. You don't even have to see Captain America Civil War if you don't want to. Just go see this one while it's in theaters. You know, experience it while you can because if you missed out on it, you will hate yourself one day. <laughs> you will come to hate yourself. Yeah. It'll just be a cycle of depression and you don't you don't you don't want to go down that route. 
You don't want to be party to that. No, that's fair. <laughs> no. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna read out exactly what I wrote on on the episode notes page. See in theaters. Right. God damn. <laughs> now. Stop listening. Go see it if you haven't already. If you maybe, have, maybe buy a ticket. Online. Go see it again. I don't give a shit. And then come back because we're gonna get into spoilers in a, in a hot minute. But this movie, man, this fucking movie. I mean, what a way to start 2018. I, I, I mean, Marvel's put themselves in a difficult spot, and and in some ways, in the sense that how do you top it? Eh, I mean, you know, we've got the big, you know, the big one lingering in Avengers, but fucking hell, I, I uh, it's it's incredible, you know, uh, you know, as Andrew said, if you, regardless of kind of your background, I think you there's something in this movie for you. You might you know pull something different out of it than than some other people might Mm -hmm. but there's something in it for you it's worth it from that standpoint and certainly even if you haven't had any exposure to not only black panther and civil war as you mentioned henry but just you know comics movies in general uh, you know as far as marvel's concerned then uh, there's still something in here that that will absolutely work for you so by by all means go see it and if you can't see it in imax it's absolutely worth it to do so just to be able to see not only when it expands to the full frame, you know the way that it's it's, it's kind of filmed a for IMAX, IMAX movie, man. But just the colors, the setting, the cinematography of it, all of it pops just so much that to really get that full factor of it, you've got to see it in IMAX. So anyway, you can see it, see it, but if you can, do it in IMAX. Spoilers, spoilers, full spoilers yeah. here for Black Panther. Um, where where do we want to start? got to start with t'challa right yeah uh and i mean that's kind of where i have it starting as far as notes and we can maybe just kind of bounce off from from that point on it's 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 kind of just an extension of what we talked about when we were talking about the supporting characters and how well realized they are but t'challa himself is also very well realized but he's an interesting character and in a very interesting spot i mean you know he's he's a he's a guy who Obviously, he's been the Black Panther from some for some time, and he's trained his life to be king. But now, you know, King T'Chaka, you know, died, uh, you know, during the events of civil wars, killed in the bombing by Zemo, and now you're left with Prince T'Challa, who is grappling with, you know, not only not having his father, but also having to become king of Wakanda, and you know, dealing with all the responsibilities and entanglements that that comes with, and that's a pretty fucking heavy burden for any one person to bear. Um, and it's interesting in the sense that. In some ways, I, I mean, the way I kind of read T'Challa's character is that in terms of where he's at, he, he's almost sort of a blank slate in some ways where he's got, you know, he's surrounded himself with all these good people. And I think there's a literally a line in the movie about it of like, that's how you're successful is to surround yourself with good people. You're a good man. <laughs> with a good heart. <laughs> there you go. Um, it's hard for good man to be king. Yeah, see? We're, that's we're, cool. It's cool we're, shit. We're just going to do fucking, we're going to do fucking quotes throughout the entire spoiler section. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> bad African accent. I apologize. I don't mean to be bad. <laughs> no, but um, you know he's 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 someone T'Challa is someone that's probably kind of rooted in tradition based on his upbringing of T'Chaka, who he, he you know he he very much seemed to be a traditionalist as far as the Wakandan participation in the outside world in terms of what they did within Wakanda as well. And T'Challa's kind of surrounded himself with some people that have varying you know viewpoints. And, you know, within the course of the movie, he goes and talks to these people about their varying viewpoints. You know, certainly, you know, we see him talking with Nakia, uh, Lupita Nyong'o's character. You know, she's she's kind of, you know, we need we need to do an outreach. We need to, you know, offer foreign aid. And you've got Wakabi, you know, part of the, the, the border tribe saying, you know, we can, you know, go out and, you know, we can, we can, you know, wage these wars and, you know, you know, implement it and do it the right way. And then you have Killmonger, who's kind of the more perverted version of that, of, like, let's just go balls to the wall and create our own empire. We have the technology available. We have the vibranium available to do it. Why don't we do it this way? Uh, and then, of course, you have, you know, someone like M'Baku who resides within Wakanda, but he's an outsider. He kind of renounces the, the you know, the technology and shuns kind of, you know, the, the viewpoints that have basically formed the basis of the Wakandan culture up to that point. And, you know, we have Prince T'Challa in the center of all these characters absorbing all their viewpoints, you know, grappling with them and saying oh is that right is that is that the way to do it do i should i be exactly like my father should i do it a new way i mean how do how do i how do i grapple with this newfound position of leadership that i've you know come into and and how do how do i do that and i mean the whole movie is really just about his journey kind of going through that right 
and it's a fucking beautiful, beautiful arc for his character. And the the nice thing about it for me is that it gives those supporting characters just such an amazing opportunity to show off why they're such well-rounded characters to really mm-hmm. kind of bring... And, 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 the, and the nice thing about it is that every single character has a legitimate viewpoint and, and one that can't just be easily discarded, one that absolutely has merit, one that T'Challa himself realizes, well, you have a point. Right. I mean, even Killmonger, mm-hmm. for all his you know ex- extremist beliefs, as we eventually see them to be, he's not wrong in some ways. Right, you know, and 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 none of them are wrong in any way necessarily. It's just, it's just, I mean, it's no different, I guess, supposing to to really politics in general, in the mm-hmm. sense that everyone has varying viewpoints. It does. It's not to say that one thing is right, one thing is wrong. It's tough. I mean, how do you find the middle ground in that? How do you find the right way through? And you know, that's that's kind of where to, to, you know T'Challa finds himself at the beginning of the movie and really kind of struggling with throughout that that very problem kind of throughout the whole movie. And it's fucking good. It's good stuff, man. It, it's yeah. really, it's really, it's a really strong, it's a really strong way to. It's a relatable story. It is. It's a there's really varying st- opinions everywhere you go. You have to, you have to learn to listen and develop your own opinion. You know what I mean? And it's, uh, it's, um, it's an interesting. Fo- it's, it's, it's told in an interesting way in this movie. But I mean, it's definitely a compelling story. And, and I it's think, relatable. I think what's interesting is that by the end of the movie. You know, and we kind of see him, you know, in the mid-credit scene with the, the United Nations scene where he's, you know, kind of opening up a little bit, you know, saying Wakanda will offer their their resources, their their technology a little bit more to the outside world. You kind of see a little bit of everyone, mm-hmm. you know, all the viewpoints that he's been offered. You know, he doesn't say, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. This way is right. I'm going to do exactly what my father did. I'm going to do exactly what the Kia suggested I, I do. Right. He takes a little bit from everyone. Mm-hmm. And, and you know you can says, see that growth right yeah, so, so you kind of see him realizing that there isn't one way forward there's you know there's a way to hopefully satisfy everyone obviously we don't see exactly a fallout of kind of what's what's happening with with you know his decisions that he makes and certainly that's territory that we would explore i would imagine in a sequel probably more of a proper sequel i imagine infinity war they're probably not going to get too in depth with wakandan politics and stuff like that but uh it's it's strong and, and it's strong because it draws on on so many things that, that that do feel authentic that do feel like they are grounded. I mean, Andrew, mm-hmm. that's the word you use. Grounded. It yeah. is fucking grounded. It's 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 really strong material. It's really strong material, and I, I think that's what impressed me so much coming away from it, uh, especially the second time through. Is just that it's just a very very strong narrative, and it's told exquisitely. I mean, Ryan Coogler is a storyteller. I mean, he 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 knows how to merge it into a package that that feels succinct but still impactful, and it, that's tough to do. It really is tough to do. I mean, sometimes you know you're working with two hours of a movie. A lot of times, you know, people, characters, storylines just get the shaft. You know, here and there, they're not as well explored as they should be, as they could have been. And I, I for me, that wasn't the case here at all. No, I mean no. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. Like it was it was told everybody everybody had an organic reason to have the opinions that they had. You know what I mean? Um and we saw each of them explored very naturally. I mean Mukabe's right. standpoint specifically, you know, his his background with Claw killing his parents. Exactly. And that conflict that, that you know, that eventually you know, when when T'Challa fails to bring Claw as he promised, well that, that's that's a very natural uh, you know, reason for him to kind of be skeptical of of T'Challa, and then boom, Killmonger brings in a dead claw. Well, it doesn't feel unfounded for for Wakabi to be like, well, fuck. I mean, he's a, he's got a royal claim. He he's done the one thing that T'Chaka and now T'Challa have failed to do for so long. Mm-hmm. You know, it's hard to get mad at him in that situation to being like, maybe maybe we do need new leadership. I mean, yeah, we we follow T'Challa as our main character, so you know we're probably rooting for T'Challa at this point, but every character, come on, Killmonger especially, Killmonger, oh, Killmonger especially, has, has very fucking reasonable motivations for what they're doing, why they're doing. And now, you know, I, I, I would argue that Killmonger, you know, he's, he's, he's a perversion of kind of maybe, you know, what Wakabi kind of stands for, but y- you certainly understand why Killmonger is the way he is. You know, it, it doesn't... See, I feel Killmonger is more of a perversion of uh, Nakia. Is that right? Is that his love interest? Yeah. Where, where well, she yeah. where she sees where she sees the the desolation and and just the you know the way that 
that people from their heritage and everything and their ancestry and whatnot have been pushed down. Um, she sees outreach and help and, and, and food and nourishment and educate and blah, 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 where killmongers weaponize, weaponize and let them stand up and take what, what's, what's theirs. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he's an angry version of, uh, well, he's kind of a perversion of all, all of his, all of the other. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. he's, kind of, he's kind of the opposite in some ways of everybody. Certainly, what I guess T'Chaka at least was mm-hmm. T'Chaka, and you know he shares that same belief as his uncle had, or his father. Yeah, had, his father. Yeah, his but, father. Yeah, um, uncle. yeah. It, it's just all it's, they're all so good. Yeah, no, like Killmonger specifically, like what a character. I mean, like you, I, I'm sure you probably both had an idea. Of, like the beginning of the movie, you see. Uh, King T'Chaka and uh, Umbak, or what's his name? Njobu. Njobu. And, Njobu. like, if you know a little bit about Eric Killmonger's background, you're like, oh, okay, th- that little kid, that that's Killmonger. Like, as soon as I saw him, I'm like, oh, okay, that's him. And then they don't show his dad getting murdered, and then they eventually come back to that. And, you know, he's this, he's a half- Wakandan half American kid who grew up his entire life in America. And I think you, you had this quote down somewhere where like to him, Wakanda was a fairy tale. You know, all the stories that his dad told him about this like incredible place in Africa where everyone's well off and their technology advanced and they're wealthy. And he's there living in Oakland, you know, in particularly in an area with high crime and, I think he has another quote where like his dad asks him why he's not shedding a tear for him. And he's like, you know, every, everybody dies around here. And so he, it's, he's just a product it's, it's, of like his, his environment. And like you, you know, it's so easy to see how he became that way. Yeah. Like he's a very sympathizable character, even though he, he goes around and murders people, but you know, he wants to do what's best for his people. And he f- thinks of a way to do it, you know, following in his dad's footsteps. And he's like, Wakanda has the means to help out other people of African descent and in the, you know, the African diaspora. And he, again, he grew up with violence around him. He goes to the military, kills for a living. So violence is a solution. And he finds a way to implement that. So, like, he... I don't know if he's my favorite character in the movie, but he's easily one of the richest Marvel characters that I've ever seen on screen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's actually really incredible because he is a monster. You know, he he's absolutely a monster. I mean, he you know he kills without remorse. You know, he 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 does. I mean, and basically his whole his whole plan of you know ep- weaponizing you know kind of the world comes at the cost of Wakanda. I mean, he's, he's okay with just burning Wakanda to the ground. He's destabilizing it immediately because he feels spurned, rightfully so, yeah. um, by kind of what the, you know, they did to him, what they did to his father. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's misguided, yes, but it's absolutely, a, you know, an understandable extension of what Wakanda has done to him. Right. You know, you see exactly the moment where T'Chaka fucked up. Um, and it wasn't necessarily in killing in, in Jobu. I mean, you know, he protected Zuri. That, yeah. That's understandable why he would do that. But, you know, certainly T'Chaka's decision to just leave, you know, little Eric Stevens behind in Oakland to true. kind of spend the next couple decades just filling himself with, with hatred and, you know, building himself up to take, you know, to strike back at Wakanda. I mean, it's a pretty big fuck up. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but... um you know, your heart kind of breaks for 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 Killmonger, because you know that he's he's one one change in his life, and, and you know everything would be prevented, probably. You know, certainly it's hard to say. I guess how things exactly would have played out, but you can see that moment where, and, and I mean, it, it's pretty explicitly laid out within the movie. I mean, certainly T'Challa is kind of very much taken aback by you know his father's decision to. What you just you just left a you know defenseless kid yeah, there. That scene was another one that was hard to watch, man. You know, so he you know him kind of grappling with the fact that you know his father, who you know he's probably looked up to for his entire life as a, you know as a as a good man and a good king, it kind of forces him to rethink. Like, well, shit, is everything that I've known a lie? Like, 
you know, it, it, and, and that's just naturally part of his arc. And it's just really well done that, you know, that's, that's how they kind of bring it in. That's how Killmonger can, you know, really be uh, part of T'Challa's arc while also still being a character in his own, in his own right. That's, that's just equally compelling and in some ways equally relatable, mm-hmm. you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see people rooting for Killmonger for, for King Killmonger. I don't think they're necessarily in the right. I mean, I think that there are qualities of him that you'd have to really look past to kind of think that, you know, he's, he's the, the man suited for the job, but it, well, like it, Wakabi, it, Wakabi could see, he could see, you know, a strong, a strong leader. Right. You know, but at the same time he could see how twisted he was. Right. I think that's ultimately why he dropped his, you know, he didn't, Right, right. Well, so, that and that bitch would have kicked his ass. But. Yeah. Killmonger's it's a fucking great villain. Just great characters across the board. And his final lines. Oh, man. Oh, that geez. cuts fucking deep. Like, it's... it's. You want to read it, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a big, that's a big thing. Bury me in the ocean with my ancestors because they knew death was better than life and bondage. That's some heavy shit. That, uh, you got you got to take a second and just process that and be like, "Holy shit!" And that that's for me is a line that to me is just that's that's the example that I would point to anyone of being like, "This is a fucking authentic movie written by two two black men that have, that have grown up in America." Like that, it does it doesn't get any more fucking real than that. You know, for, again, for something like this, for us, you know, a Marvel movie, a superhero yeah. movie, to cut into something like that is just astonishing on on all levels, really. And uh, I think that's something that'll stick around in, in movie history for quite some time. It was a thing where they jumped in the ocean from the boats. I think that's what it was. I think I've caught, I think I've messed up the line. Oh, uh, I, I've Bury re- me in the ocean with my ancestors yeah. who jumped from the ships. Mm. Something like that. Yeah, well. It's fucking good, though. Ugh. Either way. The, the the spirit has has certainly been conveyed. So uh, that and the whole the whole Killmonger's just downfall from that point. Even when they're on the train tracks, oh that's a cool move, you know. And then he you know, sits down and you can tell you can tell that T'Challa didn't. He didn't want to kill him. No, he didn't no. want to kill him. You know what I mean? He understood. He could sympathize with him. You yeah, know, they say he's he's paying for the sins of his father. Right. You know he 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 he, he understands why Killmonger is doing the things that he's he's doing. I mean, certainly he's not gonna roll over because he he sees the greater you know threat at hand absolutely but it is it is i it's mean a it's, sad it's, thing. it's a personal it's a per, it's a very personal moment that they kind of share there and it, for me it's telling that when you know killmonger actually does die you know when he pulls the knife out of his chest and falls over like i felt fucking sad yeah like, yeah that's like, definitely like, sad like shit, he, man. again he's a monster through and through but Again, you, you know, you look back on that one single moment in his life where everything went wrong, and it's just like just one slight change, and who knows what would happen from that point. Absolutely, like you said, a kid in Oakland dreaming about Wakanda and fairy tales. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's fucking, it's good, it's fucking good. <sighs> and then you tell me that uh, uh, the Coogs, the Coogs, Ryan Coogs, grew up in Oakland. Yep, yep, he did. Yeah, I mean, they say, I mean, he 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 co-wrote the script. So that's what that's what I'm saying. I mean. A lot of these lines, you can, I mean, certainly choosing to set, you know, the beginning and the ending of the movie in Oakland, it all feels so personal because it is fucking personal yeah, because man. that's, yeah. you know, any, any one of those kids may very well have been Ryan Coogler in his childhood. And, you know, it, to be able to kind of make it relatable, you know, for him and to still kind of strike at the fantastical nature of the whole, the whole thing of it. I mean, it's a, it's an, it's an incredible you know, balance that, mm-hmm. that, it, that it really kind of strives for and, and successfully achieves. So I feel like he did it in, uh, the, the, and, uh, oh, fuck. Creed? Yeah, he did it in mm-hmm. Creed too. You know what I mean? It's just such, just such, uh, excellent storytelling. It is. Um, all right. Kind of moving into maybe a little bit more, uh, I guess I don't want to say exciting, but, uh, <laughs> you know, action sequences and stuff like that. Yeah. There's a lot of them. There are some good ones. There's a lot of good ones. Uh, a lot of spectacle, for sure. Yeah. Well, and that's just it. You know, we 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 just spent I don't God knows how long talking about you know just the emotions and and you know just the the raw storytelling and the themes and the characters and the characterization that comes with with the movie. But 
there's something there for everyone. So even if you're in there for the punch, punch, bang, bang nature of it, you're not going to be disappointed from that respect, I would say, either. No, There's a lot not. to go around. And for the most part, I would say that it's all filmed very well, very effectively, and just in very kinetic, exciting ways. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, honestly, I'd say probably the worst one for me is is the kind of the opening one in Nigeria where we see him in a Civil War outfit. And it's, uh-huh. it's just very dark. Uh, for me, there's just a lot of you know, zoomed in, fast cut type of shots, the way it was shown. I feel like, I feel like, in, in, in now that you say that, and I agreed with you earlier because we talked about it briefly together, but I think that if I saw it on a smaller screen, I think it, I think it would be more recognizable about what was going on because that scene alone, everything, everything's very uh, close and, and chopped. You know what I mean? And I, on, a, on an IMAX, you know what I mean? You're sitting so far away. I feel, I don't know. I think it'd probably be realized better on a smaller screen because I think you'd be able to see those motions a little bit more clear. Um, uh, I mean, it's possible. And yeah. Henry, you could probably speak on that. Yeah. You saw it. Um, on a regular I saw it on IMAX screen, and, and, and regular. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, definitely. What do you think? I like the the stealth aspect of it. Mm. You know, it's really it, the only time we see it, him being stealthy in the entire movie. Yeah. Despite the introduction of these sneakers afterward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is a lot of cutting back and forth. But I, I do like how the the only lighting really comes from the the guards or whoever they were, right? And so you you know you get glimpses of whatnot, and sometimes like the only light is from the the gunfire. So that part I liked. I, it, it's definitely not my favorite action scene in the movie, but I don't know. It it, it is a little you know like we said, a little you know not shaky but just kind of like cutting back and forth and very fast paced. It's very different than the other, uh, the other sequences. Right, and that's yeah, like you don't, the other it's ones it's not a fighting the, sequence. Right. The the other ones there's just a lot more fluidity to yeah. how they're constructed and how they're filmed. So, I mean we get a couple scenes of the ritual combat first of which is with Mbaku. Oh, and Mbaku. The, <laughs> and just started doing the the shrug dance. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good dance. It's a good dance. I'm definitely going to pull that one on the, the dance floor if I ever find myself on one. <laughs> just stare at somebody and start shrugging. Just, just, uh, just, just doing a little shrug. like a big suit or a blanket. And it's like... <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> now, uh, yeah, so first one was with M'Baku, and then he has the, the one later on with uh, with Killmonger. I think those, to me, are kind of the standout sequences It's as far as yeah, the action man. of... The, you know, they're, they're, they're on that awesome waterfall setting. You know, especially the the Mbaku one, where you know you've got all the the Wakandan uh, peoples behind him uh, on on the both the actual waterfall itself, like it's just fucking cool looking. Um, but the actual sequences themselves of the fighting, that's where you really see, I think, that Kugler style shine through of mm-hmm. just the way that it's filmed. It's like I said, it's it's very fluid. It, you know, it feels it feels like you're in the moment, and and like the, for like in Creed especially that final fight, you know, the way that he films it, you know, he's kind of jumping in between the boxers, but it's kind of filmed as a one shot. You see a lot of that here. Um, you see that elsewhere, obviously too. Um, but I think that those, those, those two sequences are just fucking awesome. And like I said, cool setting, the story there, that, there's a lot of like, like, those, just, just a lot of really cool aspects that just come together all at once. In, in both of those sequences, not a lot of me. CG in those scenes either. So it makes it yeah. feel very, and it's just a one-on-one yeah, beat right. down of grounded. each other. Yeah, and um, Corey, 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 I can't talk. <laughs> <sighs> Cor- Corgiography? Yes, was excellent. Corgiography? Cor- Corgiography. Yeah. Uh, it was very good. Uh, uh, I like I, how I he didn't how have they powers, portrayed. too. Yeah, yeah they yeah, strip that's, them that's away. Cool um, you know, but uh, I like the way that he, um, like the way that he moves and how agile he is. Like, he seems like a panther. You know what I'm saying? That's not weird, but he's very, very, he's a super agile dude. You know, the way he's dancing around uh, M'Baku and stuff, it's uh, it's fucking cool, man. It's fucking cool. Uh, yeah. Um, and then, so we got the, the big uh, sequence in Busan, South Korea, uh, where they're, we get, I guess we, it starts in the casino, which, uh, side note, stellar Stan Lee cameo. Yeah. yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, it, sure. it was definitely a good one. Uh, but, you know, it, it kind of... You have that tracking shot in the in the casino itself oh, when, that when one, shit kind of pops great. off, which is fucking with awesome. With the spear yeah, and everything, yeah, yeah. Like yes. start, it starts with a koye. Ah, oh. if Killmonger is the emotional MVP, then a koye is the um, badass action sequence MVP. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree with <laughs> yeah, that. It's pretty fucking cool. 
you know, but but, but she, but see, everybody's got so much emotion, emotional roots. You know what I mean? She's very rooted in tradition. You know, she she hates Killmonger, but she, her tradition lies with with her with her role in Wakanda. You know what I mean? She wouldn't renounce anything because a piece of shit took the throne. Her loyalties to the throne up until the end. Yeah, she's a patriot. You know. You know, where she finds out he lives. Hey, listen, that thing wasn't over. He didn't yield and you didn't kill him. Right. Um, so at that point, she says, fuck you, Killmonger. Mm-hmm. She does. But, but the Basan stuff is pretty awesome. Even, oh, even yeah. outside so of the I casino. Sidetrack. Get, get into the, the, the car chase from uh, that point, which is fucking awesome. See Shuri uh, getting in on the action remotely. Uh, she's got some She's got some pretty good tech, I got to say. Uh, Tony Stark would uh, would I think blush at the sight of a, a lot of the uh, things going on in her lab, um, but uh, that was that was like fucking cool sequence. So that's probably the the first I guess the first time we see the the new Panther suit in action, right? Uh, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I think yeah. so. Because he suited up with it before he left, right? So, so we, obviously she kind of talked about it a little bit. You know, we see him. Well, I guess really kind of that one big maneuver that we saw, and I guess all the trailers of him, you know, using the the kinetic energy to to blast the truck and then fl- you know flip onto the car and shit. That's really yeah. cool. It's fun. Oh, I got cool. so like, I saw it a million saw times from the trailers, yeah. but it's still cool. She throws shit. that yeah. spear. She throws a spear through the window, and it, yep. it, it, oh, it turns into like geez. a barricade and flips the car up. Yeah, so cool, man. All of it's yeah. so cool. It is. It, it's really cool. And and the third act I thought was actually really fucking cool too. And there's a lot yeah. going on there. Uh Oh, you talking about the you talking about the 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 blanket shields? Yeah, yeah, the oh. fucking the fucking shields going on yeah, there. Well, you got, you, so you cool. got the big you know fight the between the Dora Milaje and the the border tribe there. You got some fucking goddamn war rhinos. Yeah, yeah. War <laughs> rhino. Black Panther fought a motherfucking rhino, which is straight from the comics. BT Dub is it really? Yeah, I mean they didn't have like vibranium armor and shit, but yeah, Black Panther definitely fought a rhino in the comics. It's badass. Um. That that whole thing, that whole third act was was spectacular, and I'm not going to take credit for this, but I I, I am going to mention it here. The third act is very much the Phantom Menace in terms of its construction, because <laughs> uh, better executed you know, from the t- from the top. Well, it's certainly far better executed. <laughs> that that goes without saying. I, I hope for 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 everyone here. But uh, you know, you've got you've got Black Panther and Killmonger battling around a force field of sorts. You got the sonic oh. dampeners, which is uh, very similar to the Qui Gon yeah. Obi Wan Darth Maul uh, fight going on there. The duel of the fates on the narrow catwalks too. Oh, yeah, on the narrow, yep, yeah. exactly. So so that's, that's pretty similar. But then you move into uh, Martin Freeman's Ross fish out of water character piloting something, uh, destroying and saving the day. That's very Anakin. That's very Anakin taking a mm-hmm. N- Naboo starfighter, and then you've got the the just the big battle in the plains. You've got you know it's the Gungans versus the the, the Federation. A giant fucking control room blows up. Yeah, Martin well, Freeman's in a I mean. control that's center. What I'm I say. He's, yeah, he's, I just yeah. caught that too. Well, Fuck. It's, it's it's yeah yeah. That's that's, that's kind loosely, of loosely kind of yeah. loose connection there. Yeah, but <laughs> again, it's it's one of those things. You've got three kind of very different things happening, and all of which are very. Uh, on the surface, very similar to what happened in The Phantom Menace, but it's what happens when you construct an actual good movie around the, you know, everything around it. I mean, I, I, this is one of the best third acts I think we've ever seen in Marvel. I mean, you know, the Avengers movies have always had the spectacle going for them. I mean, certainly, you know, the Battle of the New York and the Sokovia debacle, I don't know what it's actually called. Um, you know, Ultron dropping a city out of the sky. It's a pretty big deal. But, yeah. uh, you know, those have always been about, like, Hey, here's a million characters versus uh, you know an art you know mindless army, and this one I think you're more a lot more personally invested in, in some of them, which is you know for for certainly for a solo movie, you know the Avengers you've got the benefit of a billion movies that have built up to that point to to kind of be invested in those characters and be invested in where they've gone, but that this, ego this that ego third act hit me pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. especially with with Yondu. Yeah, I, I like yeah the Guardians the third Yondu act one. a whole lot. Yeah, uh, I agree. That that that's a pretty good one too. That one's pretty strong. I mean, as a whole, I probably think no, no, this one's pretty fucking good. Um, as far, especially for like depth, um, yeah. But just like raw motions mm-hmm. and stuff that that Yondu, 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 Yondu Udanta, <laughs> Mary Poppins, Mary Poppins, indeed. I'm Mary Poppins, <laughs> um, y'all. Uh, all right. Um, well, I'm, I was gonna, I'm gonna ask you guys, unless you guys have any big things you want to touch on, favorite characters. We got a favorite mm. character. One, or I'll, 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 I'll give you, I'll give you two. You have to pick two because okay, I think two. that I, I, I would have difficulty picking one myself. So, Ooh. who wants to start? 
I can yeah, pick. Uh, I can fucking pick two. Well, then fucking right, pick go, two, go man. for it, man. All right. Uh, my two favorite characters are your two main leads, man. I like T'Challa. T'Challa. And I like Killmonger. Okay. Those are my two favorite. All right. Okay. I mean, Fair enough. That you keep, that's, that's a very valid... Uh, very, <laughs> I mean, again, I, uh, I don't think you can pick any two and other, be wrong. I mean, don't get me wrong. Other people are equally as good. The bald... Uh, Okoye? Okoye? The, yeah. She's fucking cool, right? She's cool. But I don't know, man. The two main leads, just there's so much to chew on there. You know, both story arcs are are very deep, and, and I, you know, there's just a lot of emotional resonance with both of those people. So, I don't know. I like uh, those. Those are two of my favorite. They're cool. M'Baku's pretty cool, too. Uh, He's close yeah. second. So, if I had to, listen, if I did, I would pick two leads. Well, there's, I guess there's only really two leads, but roundabout, I guess. But it would be T'Challa and, and Killmonger, and it would be M'Baku and the bald, and, and. Okoye? Yes. Those would be like my four. Those would be my four right, favorite. So we've gone from two to four. <laughs> okay. All right, that, that makes it easier. That, that I can do sense. that. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Henry, have you have you settled on? Uh... Um. Yeah, I can give two with a runner up. Okay. Well, like, we're gonna say if... we're just we're just breaking all the rules today. So it's fine. <laughs> Fuck it. No, because if if Mbaku had like maybe five more minutes of screen time, he probably would have been one of my favorites. Mm. But w- the movie as it stands. It is Killmonger, number one, and okay. Shuri, number two. All right. Just you know, great so, comedic so, so relief. So would be your, your your honorable mention in that. Yeah, like it, like he's right up there. I think like it's kind of unexpected as to have the role that he had, but just you know, I I wish this movie was like five hours long. And we had like forty five <laughs> minutes. I think, with, I think one of the cuts was four hours long. With what in, in the editing room? I will, before, I will watch it. I would watch before that they cut it down to to be something palatable. I mean, it, that's probably a bit of a, a shit show at four hours long, <laughs> as with most movies. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. So those two, Umbaku was great, but I wish he had more time. Same thing with uh, the Queen Mother, Angela Bassett's character. I wish she had more time. Mm. Um, but everyone's great. I thought not to, you know, I don't know if we're going to talk about negatives or anything, but the only negatives, what <laughs> negatives get out of here now. No, the, the, the only accent that I didn't like was a uh, Forrest Whitaker's. I don't know if it was cause it was too similar to Saw Gerrera's character. Big the- it was like, I was like, you're, you're, you're Saw Gerrera, aren't you? I mean like that, that was it with his character like nice. uh, otherwise deception otherwise he was good <laughs> i just his was the only accent that i wasn't it did, didn't seem as authentic maybe i, I don't know i, I know yeah. the accents are based on like um yeah, well, uh, yeah i think I mean, like a south guess. south south african tribe okay. but yeah maybe maybe it was just having rogue one so so close so it's by, so fresh in your mind, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it, sound, it sounded too similar to me. <laughs> that's fair. No, I, I, uh, I think I'll agree with you with the caveat of switching Shuri and uh, Killmonger around because okay. Shuri stole the fucking show for me. I mean, in terms of like, like, yeah, I mean, T'Challa and Killmonger absolutely have kind of the most to chew on, but fucking Shuri, just uh, Letitia Wright, she, she took what she had and ran with that shit like i need shuri in every movie from now on like i need <laughs> i need shuri showing up and fucking having a chat with tony stark and avengers i need her talking to rocket and uh. you know them having having it out i've seen some people already shipping her with peter parker and i'm like fuck it let's do it man why not yeah isn't let me ask you a question what are those what are- <laughs> <laughs> uh, what- excellently well timed what-, what if isn't the isn't the new iron man a young black girl? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Ironheart. What if after Age of Ultra or Infinity War, she dons the Iron Man suit? Well, I mean, she could be Black Panther. She, she could. She, she's, yeah. she's been Black Panther in the comics before. So. Oh, has she? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that was my pick. Uh, all right, so, um, favorite uh, scene? Do we, have, do we have a favorite scene? Is that hard? Is that too hard? <sighs> yeah, that is hard, but we, well, we can do it, I believe. I just put it on the paper. I didn't actually even think about it for myself, so I'm like, oh... I put myself into a box. What do I do now? Mm. It's tough. Does that mean you go last tough. or I mean I can I can start if you give me like five seconds to, okay. to to figure it out. I can give you a handful. 
Well, we didn't ask for a handful. Look, look, mate. You need, we, we can you need all we can all give a handful. The rules, all right. All right you, you know, oh, I'm drawing the fuck. line in the sand here. You got to pick one. You can only pick one here. Um, oh, this is tough. I'm gonna go with the whole movie. <laughs> fuck yeah! Good, yeah, good pick, nailed dude. it. <laughs> I'm cheating? just gonna I'm just gonna pick a different scene from what you say, so that'll, uh, make, that'll make it easier for uh, me. I think uh uh I mean honestly, if I had to pick one thing immediately and I, I, I might pick something different if you ask me tomorrow, I think that first ritual combat sequence with Mbaku, just oh. the, the lead up to it, you know, just just the draining of the waterfall, just the, the whole design, you know, you see all the tribes present and then just Raw that motion. actual fucking combat sequence is just fucking excellent and super well realized. So that's my pick for now. Subject to change, but as of recording that, that's what I'm going with and I'm sticking with it. What do you guys got? I like I like when T'Challa goes to the, the ancestor realm. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a good pick. That's pretty good. The first one. Well, I guess he... he you go twice. twice, yeah. Yeah, no, I... Uh, I the, the, yeah, um... Um, the first time he's buried in like the proper, and then the second, yeah, second time is when he's buried in snow. snow. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, both, both. I mean, both, both times are really fucking good. Good pull. Good pull. Uh, yeah, I like, I like him. Uh, I'm gonna go with an action sequence, even though there's like so many emotional moments I could pick. Is it's too hard to pick one? So I'm gonna go with the South Korea, um, casino chase. Yeah, sequence. that's that's, that's kind of that's kind of two. Just, just Maybe that's two well, moments, but yeah, like, but you can still lump them. You, you yeah. can cheat and, get, and lump it together. Yeah, it's I'm just like, okay with it. Like that that suit. Oh, I fucking love his suit. Like, suit's fucking cool, man. Oh, I really like the design of it. I, I know. I actually didn't really see it a whole lot in the movie, but a lot of people were like, well, "Why the fuck does he have the retractable lenses so you can kind of see his eyes?" I think it's a pretty cool look, actually. Yeah, when no, he, when it, he has it, that. I think it's a pretty pretty neat homage to kind of you know the original comics history. Yeah, so. At the end of the day, a lot of those masks, a lot of those traditional African masks, they they had holes where the eyes were naturally right mm -hmm. yeah so i don't know feels yeah. like a call back to tradition yeah well yeah. that's a i'd say good uh good pixel around yeah. um i uh, the last thing i have on my list is uh that that last post credit scene where we see Ooh. uh the white wolf okay so uh, white jesus what's what <laughs> another broken white boy for sure to fix what's white, uh white what's what's the deal with white wolf well, uh, Bucky Barnes. No, in the in the comics. Was, uh, <laughs> in the comics. In the comics. What's well, what's well, White, white Wolf, Wolf actually what has what's nothing to do with Bucky in the comics. He's a totally different character. Yeah, I, I'm, so I don't know if that's I don't know if they're actually trying to do anything with that. I mean, it seems a very kind of deliberate thing for them to say. Um, I think, if I recall correctly, the White Wolf. He's like a cousin of T'Challa. That oh. I think it somewhat comes into conflict with, but I don't think he's like an outright villain. I think they kind of end up working together at some point. Um, and he's got like a cool, like white version of the panther suit. He's just pretty much like another black panther, yeah, pretty much. Kind of. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah, but uh, I don't. I mean, they can put fucking Bucky in a white panther suit. That would be uh -huh. pretty cool. I got one arm though, man. Yeah. Oh, I well, mean, he's uh, gonna have another that's, one. That's, yeah, that's easy. I mean, he's gonna have a fucking vibranium arm, surely. Oh. Nice. I mean, that would make sense, that, I, that would right? make the most sense, right? Like, why well, if you're, if, if, you know, he's they're in just going to give him Wall's hand and, and, and call it a day. <laughs> it's very, it's very uh, off-putting hand. Yeah, does it actually? Doesn't look like you could actually use the no, fingers I, for anything. No, no, I don't think so. No, probably not. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, certainly when we saw Bucky go on an ice and Civil War. You know, it kind of led to the obvious speculation of, okay, well, is Bucky going to be in Black Panther? And I'm glad that we didn't see him throughout the the main narrative of the movie. Mm -hmm. I think that it was uh, certainly the right call to make, but I, I am glad that they did give us, you know, they threw us a bone yeah. in that last post credit sequence. Uh, and uh, pretty awesome. Seems like sure he's gotten them straightened out. No more, uh, no more code words to uh, to get him uh, going a little uh, Hydra crazy again. Mm -hmm. so no I, I appreciated seeing that I think we'll see certainly a lot more of uh, certainly see a lot more of him and probably that dynamic I would say in Infinity War uh, which is only a few months away which is fucking cool and, and it's crazy you know from, from the trailer we've seen obviously there's a pretty big Wakandan presence in the movie itself so 
I've seen people online speculate that the last Infinity Stone, the Soul Stone, is actually possibly housed within yeah. the meteor, the vibranium oh. meteor that, that crashed, which would be pretty cool. You know, it would certainly explain why it affected the plant life and, you know, the, the world the way that it did. And why Maybe, it brings you to, like, an ancestral Right, realm. exactly, yeah. and why, you know, when, ah. when you take the heart-shaped herb, it, it brings you to the ancestral plane. So that certainly seems like a, a good way to take it if they're so inclined uh, but we'll see. I mean, the nice thing is we don't have to wait very long for it, which is fucking cool. Thanos is going to come in there and split a meteor in half. He's going to throw, throw a moon planets at it. and moon. Uh, throw on planets and moons. Did they did they play that trailer in front of your your second screening yesterday? No, I I, no, I didn't get Infinity War. Okay. We, we got. Uh, we I didn't got, get any got, trailers. <laughs> and what? we made it literally like five <laughs> seconds oh. before they before that's, they that's started the fault, movie. Man. It was very well timed, but. <laughs> No, when I got in there, I was halfway through the Tomb Raider trailer, okay. and then I got uh, Ant Man and uh, Soul yeah, were, were the same. last two that played before it. Yeah, I didn't get it, and, I, and I think it makes sense because it is. Yeah, I it, agree. It shows a character, so that whole like Charles Dead sequence would have been ruined for anyone yeah. who's not. Well, I don't uh, know that anyone totally bought it exactly. Oh, apparently, my roommate but, did, and I was like, "Dude, oh, really? they, they, okay. they, they, I was like, they're not going to kill Black Panther in the Black Panther movie, but it could be his little sister in that suit." That's true, but I don't guess, know. Guess, apparently guess it's possible. Or maybe maybe um, King Killmonger is not so bad after all. Maybe he's he's the real hero. No, T'Challa. <laughs> T'Challa was the villain the whole time. Boom, nailed it. Whoa. Um, all right. Uh, any parting words before we uh, g- uh, get get on with the show? No. Uh, so I've been reading the. I follow the the Ta-Nehisi Coates run of Black Panther. Yeah, yeah. Which is the current run, and I just started reading the Christopher Priest run. Which okay. is yeah. like I've yeah, read nice. online. That's like another big like run. I hadn't read that one before. Uh, I've read like a few other random stories, but that one's pretty. That one's pretty cool. I, I I'm not far enough into it to give a good enough recommendation for anyone, but I'm sure it is a good run. The Tanahasi Coast run is very cool and probably the most close to this film. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think, think there's think. A, certainly some inspiration that was taken. Yeah, like it's pretty, probably it's probably going to work both work both ways as as, as yeah. It is, but uh, I I I can't yeah. remember if he. I'm sure, like I don't know, like maybe they talked. I, I don't know if they did. I'm not. I can't confirm that. But um, I think that he started the whole kinetic um, what I called the, yeah, the, the force the, force push power. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that I was pretty awesome to see on screen. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I will. I will second certainly your recommendation of of the current run. I'm not completely up to date on it, as with most of my comics that I like to collect and not read. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little. Behind, but what I have read from it, that that run is 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 fucking aces. So yeah. definitely, if you have any interest in kind of going back to comic books and checking them out, that is certainly worth your while. And I have been meaning to check out the Chris Priest run at some point. I just haven't done it yet. Yeah, but uh, it seems very different. Like he's in New York. Um, he's you know, the art style is very different. The whole, the Dora Milaje are very different, but it's it's cool. It's been fun so far. I'm not that far into it, but mm-hmm. cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. That's uh, that's that's uh, that's good. Andrew, do uh, you have anything on Black Panther you'd like to add? Are you you ready to get into what we've been up to lately? I haven't been up to nothing but Black Panther. Well, I was <laughs> gonna say you've been leaving, in, you've been living and uh, breathing Black Panther. I am Black Panther. <laughs> okay, all right then. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's going to play very well. <laughs> uh, would you like to? Uh, would you like to back up that statement by by explaining how you please, are Black please, Panther? Please keep that on. <laughs> please, please keep please dig in the hole. Dig it. <laughs> I, ain't been, I haven't done anything. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, so i watched the uh the remake of the evil dead on friday mm-hmm. and it's still spectacular um i uh i also watched this netflix movie that came out called the ritual yeah, you talked about it last week did i mm-hmm. okay i still think it's good okay <laughs> opinion hasn't changed that's good to know <laughs> um uh, other than that, though, I think that's something that's it. Other than you other, know, other than you are Black Panther. <laughs> other than me, Black Panther. He's listened about. to the soundtrack so many times that he's absorbed it into his uh into his that's... body, and he's doing the shrug dance again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah. Uh, what have you guys been up to? 
Uh, uh, Henry? Yeah. You got anything uh, that you've been up to lately you want to recommend, but aside from the, the comics? Uh, oh, 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 before he goes, <laughs> Ultra Instinct Goku. Oh, yeah, good, no, good. Uh, I, yeah, no, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm very proud to have gotten Andrew on Dragon Ball Super mm-hmm. before it ends in, like, three weeks or something. Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's been the one show I'm, like, consistently following every week, watching it twice, reading up on it. Let's have okay. a discussion about it. I don't think we've talked about this thing before. Yeah, I can't no, talk to Colton about I, it. I mean, I, I don't, one thing and... I don't want to get into spoilers for people that are going to wait for the English, uh, sub mm. of it. No, I think I've, uh, oh, maybe, have I've you spoiled spoiled that I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but Dragon Ball Super's ending in Japan, which is sad for fans, but. It had a, some pretty cool arcs, I gotta say. Like they had the two movies, so they had to redo those arcs with like they fight Beerus, the god of destruction, and Frieza comes back for the tenth time, but this time he's gold. And then they fight uh, Goku Black, evil Goku, and then they do the Tournament of Power, which has been pretty cool. The yeah, man, Jiren, the. He's, I guess, I mean, he's he's the villain in that he's the opponent of our beloved universe, Universe 7. And he's forced Goku and Vegeta and Frieza. Vegeta! And, yeah, and, that's and, what Colt walked away with. <laughs> that's all Goku said in this last episode. Vegeta! <laughs> Yo, Vegeta got some, oh, I, I, I mean, I've always been a Vegeta fan, <laughs> Veg- but like... <laughs> Vegeta's such an asshole. He is, all the but flashbacks like, in this episode. Like, oh, he was so great. Oh. Dad, Dad, you know so much about little babies. He's like, give it me. Give Fuck me you, here. Trunks. <laughs> I, I can hold the baby. <laughs> He's sitting in the back of the train, cross arm. <laughs> that, that's, that's a hilarious episode. And then there's, um, I can't remember if it's in the movie or the TV show where he does a dance sequence. That is gold. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To that try to satisfy Beerus. Gold. Vegeta dancing. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Look it up on YouTube <laughs> if you know who Vegeta is. You look it up. It's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, Dragon Ball Super. I keep up with. Uh, I think I, I just told you too that I got the surround sound set up so I can finally watch some movies in five point one surround sound. So, and the first one you watch is Dunkirk. That's a good one. I have been putting it off until I could do I could do it justice and watch it in full uh, surround sound and see how loud it gets. It was pretty loud. It gets loud, yeah. yeah. You need to buy Mother and watch that in surround sound, Ooh, too. I, I haven't seen Mother yet. Yeah, that's a good one. The sound design in that one's great. Um, I need to watch the two planets, or the two ape movies. Those are those are next yes. on my list. I watched the first one, so I need to watch the latest, two. You haven't seen Don either? No. And I, mm-hmm. I have it cute. Good stuff. I, I watched yeah. that. I think uh, I watched that, that, that is like one of the best yeah, I have it trilogies. Up. Like the most, certainly the most surprising best trilogy I think, and that I can think of. But yeah, no, d- yeah. definitely worth getting on both of those. Yeah, no, just catching up on some movies, and I'm behind on my Mario Galaxy, but I'll, I'll get back to it at some point. Oh yeah, man, what about you, Colton? What have you been up to this week? Um, well, I also have become the Black Panther. There's two Black Panthers? There's two Black Panthers. Well, uh, wait, wait, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm the Golden Jaguar. I'm Killmonger. Ah, uh, no, I was going to be Killmonger. <laughs> no, you, okay. Well, I'll, I'll be Shuri then. <laughs> it's fine. She, she's eventually going to be the Black Panther, so. That's true. She's cooler than both of you anyway. Um, no, no, I've, uh, yeah, I mean, not the first time we talked about it on the podcast, but go listen to that fucking Black Panther album. It is yes. incredible. Uh, it's top to bottom. Uh, not, a ska- not, not a track that I will skip. No. When I listen to it, yeah. and both times I've seen the movie, I've listened to it in its entirety on the drive there. Yep. Uh, which also says that I've also been taking some extensive drives to get to theaters <laughs> to see it. But uh, more importantly, like that's just it's just a fucking great album. So highly recommend that. I mean, I I'm not typically big on rap, and I don't. I mean, I I enjoy it in spite of that. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly more in on rap than I have been probably in the in years past. I don't know that it's going to win over anyone that just straight up despises the genre per se, but if you have any sort of casual interest, certainly if you're at least familiar with Kendrick Lamar, like you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't check it out. So oh, uh, yeah. I, I, I recommend that. Other than that, I, I, I mean, really the only thing that I've been 
watching is the the fucking Winter Olympics, the the Pyeongchang 2018 Winter Olympics. Watched a lot of curling. Mm. I can tell you that the USA team is bad. <laughs> uh, they got their asses <laughs> flat handed to them in Sweden or by, by Sweden a couple days ago. Uh, like they straight up just conceded when they got to like the the eighth end or something like that because they're like, yeah, we're losing by like ten points. It's fine. Just we're good. <laughs> we're gonna call it here, guys. Uh, uh, but it's, it's it's the most curling I've ever watched in my life. And a lot of those events, I'm just like, I I, I wonder to myself, I'm like, how the fuck do you get on a goddamn Olympic curling team for the United States of America? Like, we, we, what what is the path in life that brings you to that <laughs> point? Like, I I wonder. <laughs> Like, we, I, we should I'm just not, send LeBron to James just... over to the curling team, and they'd win gold. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's possible, <laughs> you know. Uh, I, 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 I mean, it's, it's not to. I'm, I'm sure those guys are are great, but I'm like, these guys must have a day job, right? Like, can is is there a curling league that you could be, you know, professional could, curling? Could you support a career from that? I apologize if if, if like that's I, highly I'm, offensive. If I'm striking a nerve with someone that's like you motherfucker, you know. But <laughs> no, I just no. I, I I a lot of the events and like. Like, I'm not, again, there's a lot of talent, especially a lot of, like, the fucking sledding events and shit. I'm like, holy shit. But where like, do you find this that? If, I, like, if where, I did that, where, I would break my happening? neck immediately. That's my question. Like, where is this happening? No. I, where, where's, Bob's, like, uh, where's bobsled uh, happen? Uh, where's, they, they did the thing. Uh, where? The, the, they made a movie about that. Like, there was a bobsled team that come out of Jamaica or something. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I forget yeah, what it's called. Yeah, I, 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 yeah I, don't, I don't remember what it what But that's called. a legit thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. I mean, I, I I don't know. It's it's interesting. I, it's fucking fascinating to watch. I I've enjoyed watching it, but uh, again, it's been the these, thing these, about these, all these the are the things that come though. to mind when I watch it. I'm like, what an interesting like path for someone to to be on a goddamn Olympic curling team for the United States. That uh, to me, the curling especially is the one where I'm just like, what? I mean, like skiing and stuff. Like, okay, you know, there's obviously yeah colder travel. regions. We live in Florida. Well, Andrew and I live in Florida, so we're like, what's snow? What's a snow? Yeah. Um, John Snow. <laughs> you know, uh, I've, been, but, I've been meaning to ski. I haven't gotten around to it. Skiing's pretty cool. I like to ski. I'd like to go, but I mean, I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to like. I wouldn't be able to. You know, Com- competitively ski. No, there, yeah. it's just not feasible for me to do it. You'd have to move somewhere up north. Yeah, but you, you know, know, the west coast. Really. But see, that's well, that's what's cool about that's what's cool about the Olympics in general, though, because it takes athletes from all different places and stuff, and 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 puts them in a situation. Like, for example, if you're if you're down in the you know if you're if you're in Jamaica or whatever, you know, you can't, you don't have access. You can't represent. It's difficult to represent your country doing certain things that you just don't have access to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, just like it's hard to compete. I would imagine if you're from a really northern country, it's hard to, it's hard to do stuff like uh, track and field, right? If it's always well, cold. You got indoor. I mean, you got indoor. I suppose I, you're right. I, I bet you Wakanda would have a incredible Winter Olympics team. Probably, and everyone would be like, "Why the fuck is this ass backwards country always <laughs> like, handing they're, us they're, they're asses just, the entire farming. What's that bobsled made like, of? You're in and you're out. Like they're just fucking trashing us. Like look at Umbak- Umbaku as like the the snowboard champion. <laughs> yeah, that motherfucker be doing shot put. And <laughs> that's, then that's not a that winter, that winter event. <laughs> that's not a winter. Unless event. you're no, like doing no, snowballs like or something. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it for this week, guys. <laughs> we, we've, uh... um, um, Baku, win- Winter Olympic champion. <laughs> um, uh, thank you guys for uh, tuning in to another episode of Watch, Review, Repeat. Thank you to Henry for joining us for uh, another episode. Uh, first of quite a few to come. Um, you know, if, you, if you've enjoyed kind of the dynamic here, uh, absolutely do yourself a favor and, uh, so, uh, you know, become a patron uh head to patreon.com slash watch review repeat and um you know you'll chip it in a couple bucks that'll help us out to kind of maintain costs but you'll get uh access to our bonus episodes you get access to um, the early versions of these episodes we put them out a little bit earlier before the regular release so definitely worthwhile for you guys to do it and uh, our first bonus episode which is up now is the marvel cinematic universe phase one Uh, which we did with uh, none other than Henry. And it's the first in a series of Marvel Cinematic Universe episodes that we're going to be doing for um, really the next couple of months leading up to, you know, Avengers Infinity Wars release. So uh, definitely, definitely check that out. Um, Check out our website as well. That's watchreviewrepeat.com. And, uh, you know, subscribe to us or, uh, you know, follow us on Twitter at WRR pod, send us any uh, questions, comments or anything like that to our email at watchreviewrepeat at gmail.com. 
Our intro and outro track is Mechanolith by Kevin McLeod, licensed under the Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license. And next week, Andrew and I are going to be talking about Alex Garland's Annihilation. Oh, which, yeah, oh my oh, God, I'm so we're, excited we're about greatly it. looking forward to. Oh. And uh, I'm sure we'll have many words to share on that front. Good Lord, he's losing his mind over there. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on. Oh. <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm, I'm puzzled. I don't know what's happening. I, I, think, I think. I think. I'm they, becoming the Black Panther. <laughs> I think he's. I think he's been sitting in his chair for too long. Who gave him the harsh hit? Losing his mind. <laughs> At least I did not. Not, not all I herbs are the same, asleep, dude. Not all herbs are Do the what? same. Not all herbs are the same. <laughs> no, not all. <laughs> you, you, you probably had a different kind of herb. I had no herbs. I promise. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh yeah no i think I, I lied that is it that is it for the episode guys uh thank you again uh we will we will we will see you next week and uh i'll let you guys take it out from here have a good night you... everybody oh god um I, I said this on the on the last podcast but if you want to be cooler than your friends and uh, say that you listen to podcasts and they also listen to podcasts, you can say you subscribe to a podcast on Patreon and you will be cooler than they are. So there you go. There you go. There you go. (laughs) Until next week, guys. Adios. 